Well, good morning. I'm at uh, VMworld 2013, and together with Prabhu from uh, from Microsoft, I have some uh, some questions around uh, the future data center, uh, Microsoft's uh, proposition in the future data center. Mm -hmm. So, Prabhu, what is uh, what is your job within Microsoft, sure. and uh, what does the future data center look like? <laughs> uh, not the best of the places to talk about Microsoft. Uh, we are at VMworld here. Uh, so I'm, my name is Prabhu Rambadran. Uh, I'm a senior product manager in the Windows Server and System Center product marketing team. Uh, my main area of focus is around the software-defined storage, software-defined networking, uh, DR, backup, and things like that. Uh, so uh, your question was around the future of data center and how Microsoft thinks about it. Uh, we, we call it the cloud OS, uh, the cloud operating system. Our goal is uh, to provide a consistent, seamless experience across customers' data center, uh, the public cloud, Windows Azure, mm -hmm. uh, and service providers' cloud, uh, like the rack spaces of the world. So uh, we don't we don't necessarily call it software-defined data center, but the way we think about it is, you know, uh, the the other two clouds, the public and the service providers' cloud, is kind of a logical and a seamless extension of customers' data center. Uh, and our goal is to, uh, through Windows Server and System Center, provide a consistent experience across all three clouds. So that's kind of how we see it. Uh, so we introduced Windows Server 2012 last September uh, and System Center 2012 last April, 20, uh, April 2012, and then followed it up with an SP1 release this, this January. So System Center SP1 and Windows Server 2012 kind of forms the core mm -hmm. to our Cloud OS story. Uh, and within a year, we are basically refreshing both the products. Uh, so the R2 wave of both System Center and Windows Server is coming out later this year okay. uh, on the 18th of October. So your focus in your area, you mentioned like software-defined storage and networking. What does Microsoft offer from a software-defined networking and storage perspective? Uh, so interestingly, uh, our approach uh, is kind of open and extensible. It's, it's, it, in certain ways, it's similar to what you heard about uh, VMware talk uh, over the last couple of days. Uh, so the core to our story is network virtualization, which is the ability to create network overlays on top of your physical networks, uh, giving the flexibility at the network level, the same way you get it at the VM level. Is it uh, with, with uh, switching only or routing and load balancing? And switching and routing. Uh, and what we also have is, uh, with the R2 release, have an L2 gateway that basically connects the virtual world with the physical world. Uh, and you don't need a separate infrastructure or a separate platform for this. Uh, all the functionality is basically built into Windows Server 2012. Uh, and upgraded with R2, and the management capabilities are all available in System Center. So you basically don't go buy a new platform, but you make use of what you already have. Uh, what, what about uh, software-defined storage? Uh, software-defined storage, so we, we kind of look at it uh, differently, right? Uh, when, when you think about storage, uh, customers have two choices, direct attached storage and expensive uh, SANS, right? Uh, people like the functionality, the availability, the performance that SANS give, but they're not very happy with the cost that they pay for it. Uh, with data growing over 40% year over year, customers cannot just buy SANS and then keep loading it up with more and more data. That so just there's, there's more focus on, on, on using local storage. Exactly. Uh, exactly. So the way we think about it is for storage, just buy commodity storage, which is JBOTS, just a bunch of disks, the, the disk shelves. Uh, and present it to Windows. Mm -hmm. And Windows has a technology called storage spaces. What it does is pools the bunch of disks and virtualizes the storage and then exposes it onto your Hyper-V nodes. And to expose the storage onto your Hyper-V nodes, we have a scale-out uh, file server cluster. So what happens is we, we have the ability to add compute nodes that expose the storage and scale it out independently of how you scale out the storage. So as you need storage, you buy more JBODs. As you need more compute power, you buy more uh, file server nodes. And these file server nodes are clustered together, which means they're highly available. And the protocol that we use is SMB 3.0. Uh, it's the file share protocol that you've typically used. So that's gone through a complete rebirth since 2012. Uh, from what we've seen, the performance of SMB 3.0 is, uh, to a large extent, slightly better than what you get out of fiber channel-based storage. So, so what what is new? So 2012 R2 R is is RTM. Uh, 
so a, a couple of uh, last uh, yesterday actually uh, so we announced so rtm uh, yesterday uh, general availability is on the 18th of october yes. uh, a couple of months from now what, what are the, the three main or best uh, topics from a storage space perspective with the r2 release uh, the first thing is uh, we support tiering uh, so what this gives you the ability is to have uh, a combination of SSDs and regular spinning drives and Windows would automatically tier the data depending on the usage across both the SSDs and the HDDs, uh, giving you kind of the performance of SSDs with the storage capacity of regular spinning drives. So that's huge. Uh, we have something called a write back cache. Uh, if you think about SQL workloads, right? You have a lot of random writes and then nothing happens after that. And then you have a bunch of random writes. If these writes typically go into the hard disk, your performance takes a hit. So we have the ability to absorb these uh, quick writes uh, through a technology called write-back cache. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that, that's, that's great. Uh, and just, you know, the, 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 the management capability of storage. So if you have System Center Virtual Machine Manager, you now have the ability to provision a highly available storage solution from, from scratch within a matter of minutes. Okay. So what, in about eight minutes, you could basically pull a bunch of disks, uh, spin up a uh, Windows Server on bare metal servers, uh, and then expose that as you know, highly available storage for your Hyper-V nodes, all within a matter of minutes. So that's pretty cool. Looks like a great future ahead. So thanks, thanks for your time. No thanks for uh, for the information as well. Thank you. And uh, see you later. Yeah, thanks. Sure. Nice meeting you. Thank you.